Hello and welcome back to Workwives, Anna. Hi, Sarah. Hey. And Sarah's stomach, which is making some it's gurgling noises been in the background. Rumbling today. I'm getting hungry. Yeah. I'm always thinking about food. Mm, it's always. a good thing to think about. That's been one great thing that we have had in, in common. common. Yep. I think we we actually bonded over our great love of the buffet. Yes, one of the many things we've bonded over, but one of the best things is it is the good old fashioned buffet. Damn you, COVID. Mm. Sizzler will never be the same. No. So we were talking and uh, we get asked a question so often that we thought we would actually spend today elaborating on this question that you and I get asked on the frequent. As business partners for the last eight years, the question, the age-old question, we get asked a lot, Anna. What's the question, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> How do you both make it work so well being in business together? Because I guess it has it has looked like a very um, happy partnership between the two of us, which it is. And we do get along really well. And I guess that shows. And so we do, yeah, we get a lot of people asking us when they're going into business, how we make it work. And it, it has prompted us to think about it. And there's a lot that we can expand on. But just for today, we wanted to give sort of a digestible bite-sized chunk of stuff that you can walk away with to at least start working on things. So we thought we'd come up with a checklist to set up for the success. If you are starting out in business with someone or you're setting up um, a venture of your own and you're, go- you're moving forward with that with someone else, this is just a useful guide for you to sort of check against to make sure that you are headed in the right direction together. And honestly, if you go into small business, for me, isn't it living the dream, working with a mate... Yes. That you can have fun, bounce ideas off, share the same passion, get excited. And that's, you know, these are all the good things. And I think this is what everybody has initially when they think about a business. Yes. The problems that can seep in are things that we're going to address today to ensure that you have a healthy longevity in your business. Exactly. Because there are, you know, I have seen a lot of friendships start out, you know, people get along like a house on fire and they go, great, let's start a business together. And they don't realize that a lot of their personalities that are very similar can actually create, cause a lot of problems in, in business ownership together. A hundred percent. You have to be more than friends. It's like, so, you know, um, you don't want to be your your child's mate. You want to be their mother. Sometimes with a business relationship, it's not about being a friend. Yes. Sometimes it is about having hard conversations. Yeah. And let me say this, it is so fun to have a friend to work with. And I don't think either of us would have been successful in our two businesses um, if it had have just been one or the other because we both have strengths and weaknesses Mm. and we both have on days and off days and we know when to step up and when to step out Mm. so but it okay so if we're just starting out then let's crack on with our five things that um would make a recipe for moving towards success the first one i think is pretty basic but very very important and that's sitting down which we did at the beginning uh of our business venture together and nutting out a overall vision statement for Mm -hmm. your business um, that ensures that you have shared values for the business itself. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be a massive template. It's just sort of sitting down and saying, you know, what do you want out of this business? Yes. Who, who are we? How are we representing ourselves and what's our shared goal? Uh, We, we did a chat um, or we, have shared a course with a psychologist, Dr. Gavin Brown, who went through quite a bit uh, about your why. What is your why? So when when the chips are down, what's your reason for being there that is more than just getting a paycheck at the end of the week? Why are you doing this that draws you to it? What's your passion, your purpose for this? What's your why? So really you have to come up with that together and make sure that that's in line with each other's why. Because Lord knows for the first two years of our business, we didn't really make anything. So Certainly not. <laughs> money was not what kept us getting out of bed. <laughs> right, exactly. It had to be the passion. Yeah. So shared, shared vision statement. Uh, there's lots of templates on the internet, which I think you can come up with. We may have come up with one. I can't remember, but I do remember we sat down and had and made sure that the overall structure – 
the umbrella business was something that you and I both agreed upon. Yeah, and we did it over a margarita, which was something else that we share. But also, I think in that we ensure that we have the same values for the business. Yes. We both have very similar values and we wanted to run it the same way. Yeah. And that's imperative. You know, don't even go into business or don't even move forward past this step if you believe that you and your business partner are different in that respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that brings us to our second thing because while while you're structuring your overall business vision statement and the and the guide for what it will be in and of itself is that you want to look at the next at least 12 months or where you're headed together. So a, a plan, sorry, a, a, like a goal set up system or a, an overall plan for the next 12 months, yeah? Yeah, for example, I think we sat down and we said we would like to start a membership-based program. Mm-hmm. So with that, obviously it meant that we had to go and then find the software for a membership-based <laughs> program so that we could take people's, you know, membership. And we had a system where we, we kind of collected everybody's data. We also had to, uh, we moved forward and we wanted to do a directory. So, you know, if we hadn't have sat down and, and shared that that was our goal and what we wanted to do, we could have both been investing our time going in complete different directions. So that was really, really important so that we, it was uh, celebrated together when we ticked off our goals. Mm, so yeah. we kind of do that almost annually. We've done little things like, let's see if we can go overseas this year. Or, you know, there's some fun things as well. And it's really great when you're working on the same page. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But it, it just makes sure that you're going down um, the same path together and that you're not sort of veering off onto different paths or that you don't have different visions for where you're going to be in 12 months time. And then three months in, you realize that you're actually walking in very different directions and it's not going to work. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. It's not always easy. Compromise, compromise, compromise on everything that we have done together. Mm. I'm like a bull at a gate. And if it was me, you know, I would try and have our own jet in the first year and it pulls me back down. (laughs) But that's really important too, that, you know, sometimes my ideas fly out at a million miles and that's good because that, you know, not shakes you up, but inspires you. Okay, maybe we'll we'll see if we can do that. So meeting in the middle, but it is about compromise and it's not always getting your own way. Right, yeah. When it comes to compromise, I guess that brings us to our third thing. So our first thing is our shared values and our business vision statement is that you want to have that in place. The second thing is to get a goal setting in place. So make sure that you're in line with what goals you want. And the third thing I believe would be agreeing on your the split of your roles and particularly the time commitment that you are each going to take on yeah and that's that's a funny question that I get asked a lot and I think this has worked for us I'm not going to say it works for everybody but we have had a very loose arrangement with how that has happened and it became very organic in the beginning that both of us just kind of skewed towards certain areas of the business. I don't think we actually ever sat down and said, you know, you do HR, I do PR, you do the back end, I do, you know, the people and social media, etc. We just kind of sat down, talked about what happened to do, and both of us just organically stepped into certain roles. Yeah, yeah. So I think, it, yeah, to a certain degree that it doesn't need to come naturally that you have – that you're not competing in the areas where you want to excel and that somebody's happy to take on something that the other person might not want to take on. So you need to make sure that every you've covered all your bases as far as who's taking on what. But also if somebody has to step away for whatever reason or is not feeling well and needs to uh, drop drop the ball a little bit, the other person is going to be picking up the slack without resentment. And if there is something that is unfair, that a conversation will happen around that. A hundred percent. I think some some businesses, it would work very well in sitting down from the beginning and doing a division. Mm. For us, very early on in our business, you, I think, were moving house and we had a sale of a product and the product went quite well. And I remember ringing you to celebrate our little win. Um, And you basically said to me very fairly, hey, look, I've been out of action. Um, You know, I've been moving house. You take the profit of this. And it didn't feel right. I remember saying to you, no, no, it's 50-50, everything we do. And I think that that has been a very 
organic, but a very clear thing in our business that we step up at different times. Mm. Um, you know, there are, and there are non-negotiables too. I think uh, every Friday, you know, you've got uh, your little boy Austin with you. So Friday is yours and Austin's day. But in saying that, I have school holidays where I might ring you. It's a great day. And I say, we're going to movie world. And so there is, you know, for us at work, some people may not be as flexible, but that has worked really, really well that I know sometimes when you're building the back end of a website, you might be bogged down in that baby for, you know, <laughs> yeah, for yeah. weeks on end, night and day. Um, but then I might be more consistent throughout the year with social media or other things. And for us, we acknowledge where the other person has been stepping up. Sometimes we tell each other to step away, but it has just been a very 50-50 split and that has worked really well. Yeah, yeah. It might be obviously different if there's more than more than two partners in the business, uh, but for us that's that's what's worked it's been it's been a 50 50 thing in all areas and we understand that though that ebbs and flows we both will generally be giving the same amount of commitment to the work that we're doing yeah and we've never said let's do a 40 hour week there are some weeks where we could have been doing 80 hours but if it wasn't for you sitting down and doing a system (laughs) it's kind of way down (laughs) right so we we really see where each other's strengths and weaknesses are and appreciate that and then you know alternatively give each other time when we need it speaking of strengths and weaknesses i think that brings us to number four on the checklist which would be complementary personalities so like i touched on earlier i think there is an element of just matching with the right person in Mm. business and i think had it been i i I often wonder this if if i had set up business with someone else would I still be here with them would I still be as satisfied where where we're at with the with the business relationship that we have and I don't know I think probably not because I think intrinsically we there are elements of our personalities that just work and some of my um personality weaknesses are leveled out by your strengths and vice versa so thanks Anna well, it's true. I mean, there's, you know, I, I'm anybody who knows me well and probably not well knows that I'm direct. And most of the time that comes across as diplomatic, often it can come across as blunt. Or if I'm in a really bad mood and you've caught me on the phone to chat about something that needs to happen, you'll get really snappy, Anna. <laughs> And yep. she's nodding, yep. <laughs> vigorously <laughs> nodding. And, um, A lot of people, women particularly, can at worst, at at best, be offended, at worst, be offended and not say something and walk away and get resentful and still not bring it up with me and have it fester and have me not realize that I've offended them and have the entire relationship break down because one of us has done something that the other didn't realize had happened. Mm. But not only would you, number one, bring it up if it was offensive to you enough, but number two, you have the capability to go to recognize and say, Anna's having a bad moment. It's not me. She's not angry at me. She's just angry. Or even if it's a situation where I am frustrated with you, you can, you can have the self-reflection to go, she's frustrated at me. I'm going to look at why. Yeah. Yeah. In saying that too, I think sometimes when I bounce in, chipper on the daily it probably sometimes really rattles your goat (laughs) but yeah I think that's really really important so um, I've even worked in situations with people who have actually done uh, psychological tests before going into business and not to say that we're not going into go to business but to actually color code your personality so that you understand what you're working with and mm. how each other functions which is a great idea there are so many resources out there now that you can sit down and um, and do personality tests and to work out how people function together and individually which can really help your business flourish by just knowing where to tread carefully and um, where you are pushing the boundary. Yeah, it's I, th- I find those tests fascinating. And again, I wonder if, you know, I sat down and did a test with someone and we were completely 
not right for each other, whether there were ways that we could overcome that. And I think one of those ways, which is number five on our list, um, lucky last, but certainly not least, probably most important for us, is that commitment to working on communication. Yes. Yeah, it is. It really is like a marriage. There has been so many circumstances in the last eight years where Anna has had an idea and it may not have lit my fire or, you know. Didn't resonate with you. Yeah, or something that didn't kind of spark joy. But if I can tell that it's done that for you, then I'm happy to give it a go and vice Mm. versa. There's been a lot of me, woo, let's do this. And, you know, and I think that you have to sometimes know when to speak up and then other times realize it's not all about you. And if this is something your partner feels that they would really be happy doing, that sometimes you've just got to step aside and support that. Yes. Yes. And secondarily to that, if there, if there is a misunderstanding, a miscommunication or um, somebody's got upset or offended by something, certainly not throwing a rug over that and sweeping it into the corner. It, I think one of the key elements to the success of our partnership is never, ever, 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 ever letting something fester. Yes. I think the most we've gone without talking to each other is – I know it was, it was between 24 and 36 hours because at the end of that, I wrote you a long winded letter and said, okay, I guess our partnership's over. I will write up, (laughs) I will write up the business, uh, settlement. (laughs) Gosh, you're so direct. (laughs) But Anna, that, yeah. And, um, it was, again, that was probably one time in eight years. So I don't think that's a great, I think you've got to have some. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I think a lot of people possibly if they're disagreeing about something, they'll retreat into their corners. Yeah. And that's something that you taught me to do as well is not to take everything so personally to articulate how you feel and then meet in the middle ground. And there are times sometimes where a decision in our business has not been, um, not been easy for either side and we'll both hold our own and we can sometimes sit on an issue and flesh it out for weeks Mm. giving each other both sides of the story or then coming up with the alternative and then I think we always reach a mutual compromise Mm. and we're happy to back down but as long as we feel that we've actually voiced I don't think we've ever not felt that we've had a say and I think if you're going into business with anybody don't be you know, the person in the corner that mm. hasn't got your own spin because you're not going to love your business if it doesn't feel like it is reflective of you. Mm, yeah, yeah. And like like you said, um, the communication coupled with compromise. Yes. With accepting that, yeah, not everything's always going to go your way. And if something is really important to you, being able to voice it and being able to voice it in, what a buzzword, but in a safe space. Yeah, yeah, that you're not going to be judged or that you can be vulnerable or you can express discontent about something and that it will be taken on board without someone going, well, screw you, see you later. Yeah. So that's us getting kind of, well, ready, right into the nuts and bolts and the nitty gritty and yeah, the... just di- diving head first and just motorboating the content, wow. right? You know? Wow. <laughs> So hopefully we haven't turned you off going into a business with a friend, but but these are the things that need to be talked about because it's not all long lunches, sizzler buffets and margaritas. Though they will come. And they are so good when they come. <laughs> yeah, over, over the coming podcast, I think we will dive into a lot of these topics and we'll give you more real-time examples of how we have managed it in our lives. But that's an overview of if you are starting up in business with someone, get this checklist out, make sure that you're on the same page generally with this stuff. And if there are flags that you address them really early on. Yeah, a hundred percent. And if there's anything that we can help you with, if you've got any niggling questions or if there's anything that we've touched on today that you would like us to elaborate on further, there's lots of ways that you can get in touch. Anna? Mm. Well, first and foremost, you can reach out to us via our Instagram, which is at the.work.wives. So that's the workwives with 
little full stops in between them. Yeah, absolutely. Or you can reach out to us uh, on our website, which is www.theworkwives.com.au. We'd love to hear about any stories or experiences that you have had with what we've spoken about today. And if you've got a story that you would like to tell, or if you know somebody that does, you can let us know. Mm. So now we're off to battle out our latest disagreement. Get your boxing gloves on. You've seen the inbox this morning. 